Well, there's some guidelines to for men to know if they're called to the ministry. Some of those guidelines, four of them, would be subjective, objective, collective, and effective. So first, subjective. Subjective is the call and the feeling, the burden that Jeremiah had when he said that there was a fire in his bones when his mouth was shut, that he needed to open his mouth to, in order to preach the Word of God, a burden to preach the Word of God. So subjective is one. Then objective is another. Is Do you actually have the ability to be in the ministry? Has God given you those giftings? And, and by God's grace, I believe he has. So subjective, objective, collective. Collective is, does the church affirm that you have the gift to be able to teach? And by God's grace, Cornerstone Baptist Church has affirmed that, that gifting. And so subjective, objective, collective, and effective. Effective would be, has the Lord produced fruit? Has the Lord given fruit? for that ministry. So how's that worked out for me? That has worked out for me in that years ago, I began to teach the Bible in Bible studies. And then I began to study for, and prepare for the ministry in my local church, Cornerstone Baptist Church. And through those things and more opportunities to serve has just grown and grown and grown so that the church now is sending us to be able to go and start another church in Guatemala. Mm -hmm. Well, it started with Ashley having the burden to be able to preach the gospel to her family. And that started in 2007. Mm -hmm. And then since that time, we've had the opportunities to be able to go down and minister there. There have been a number of opportunities of the Lord opening a door for the gospel in the community. We've had opportunities to disciple people, and the more time we spend there, the more burden we've had for the people, and the more we see the need for a church with sound doctrine there. We don't know of another Reformed Baptist congregation in Guatemala, so it's a major metropolitan city, four million people, and for that many people, not to be a Reformed Baptist congregation is, shows there's, there's a great need for the, for the biblical doctrine. Yeah, and I, I think what compels or gives me a greater burden is when I was doing some discipleship with some of the ladies there and how they didn't really have a, an idea of what a sound biblical church looked like. How it, How is it that you would evangelize? How is it that you would practice church discipline? How is, it was just like they had no clue. Um, so that, that really just makes my heart heavy for them that they don't, I don't, ha I wouldn't have any place to send them to. Um, I wish I, I would have been able to, but um, hopefully we would be, I will <laughs> in the near future. If you'd like to be able to help, we've set up the website for that purpose. So the website is missionsgua.org and it's set up for three primary ways to help. One would be that you would be able to pray for us. We want to be able to continue to update prayer requests there. The word of the Lord will run, that people will be converted and saved, that we'd be faithful to the Lord and His word. Second, if you'd like to be able to help, then you have the opportunity to give financially on the website. And we may try to make that as convenient as possible for you. And, then, and third, if you'd like to be able to consider going long term to be part of the church, or to be trained in missions, then we would be glad to be able to disciple and train people for that very purpose. So I would I would remind you that if you in partnering with us, we're not making a McDonald's and we're bringing a, a business or a restaurant or something to Guatemala. This is about the glory of Jesus Christ. This is about his gospel being spread and people coming to repentance and faith, going to heaven to worship him. This is about the glory and honor of Jesus Christ. So please join us in this work and you'll be glad that you did that in, the, in heaven.